Hey y'all, it's Anime Kieran and today <laughs> I'm going to be reviewing episode 1 of Seven Seeds and good lord, this anime, it has a title that will probably fit in with a hentai. And I watched this English dub and some of the performance sound <laughs> straight from a fucking hentai. Now, this is not to say I am insulting the manga. Just a heads up, this is my thoughts on the first episode of the anime. Let me let me just get that straight. The reason why I have to get this straight is because I've reacted to various episode ones of animes. And I just thought I should clarify that. Now, when you read the manga before, just letting you know. So these are just my thoughts on the anime. Now, on the specific episode, it does have an interesting premise. You have these people in their everyday lives, and then one day they wake up on a ship without memories of how they got on the ship. And then pretty much you got our main characters, which is this little girl called Natsu, this guy that hates being called Sakaida, but I'll call him Sakaida. You have this man that looks reliable, and then you have this badass hardcore chick called Botan and they all get on this boat then they go into this island and I do like how from the get-go it does establish some semblance of threat levels because for one I like how between these four there's like this already this negative dynamic for me because you have not to the girl she's got low self-esteem she says it within her in a monologue so I think it does properly set her up for some kind of character arc where she might slowly become outgoing as the series progresses and then you see those, the poor girl even say things like she's scared of being abandoned so that way she, she wants to follow the orders properly and all that. And then in, introduces this guy called, I don't even know his fucking name, I just know they all call him Sakaida because he's a douche but then there's this guy who fucking acts as if he would fit right into, into a fucking hentai with the way he just touches the ass of um, of the little girl Natsu who is essentially a girl in her freshman year in high school while this dude is like 18, touches her ass and then I'm like oh jeez. And then touches the ass of Botan too and then I do like how Botan mentions do you want to lose your arm? And I was like damn! So I do like how they introduce a character that's unlikable, but then they introduce a character that is likable in Botan, so... I do like that. And then they introduce this guy that's kind of sweet. Can't, I haven't quite grasped his name yet because... After this review, I'm probably going to start watching as many episodes of this show as possible before I fall asleep. And there's a lot of names! And... For now, it seems like the sweet main character. Not much characterization for him as... I guess he is competent, so I guess there's that characterization. And he is the type to want to help other people, so there is that. But I'd say of real, the ones of real interest are actually Natsu. Because I feel like she can have set up for future character arcs, hopefully. Botan, because she's got this badass vibe and it's even mentioned during the episode. That this one dude, the Sakaida dude, even suspects that she might know what's going on with the whole island situation. So there's that possible interesting dynamic. And then Botan suspects Sakaida boy of possibly knowing what's going on with the island. So it has this dynamic of who the fuck can you trust between these two characters. Because really the only ones that are trustworthy is Natsu in the, in the man or in the boy with the black hair. And that's it between those groups. So I do like that and introduces tension between that dynamic. And then I like how it shifts to these other characters' perspective where you have this girl called Hana, who relatively is with this group of people. And then there's this guy in charge called the Yaganai, and then he's a fucking dick bag and all that shit. Because um he has like rough methods of like say wanting to use people as bait to lower bugs or wanting to like burn bug creatures after they're finished off but then the Hana chick's like no because it's 
unnecessarily it's unnecessary and it can burn the forest so I do like that kind of stuff because if we have two groups that will we have two groups and then the people in, in those specific within those groups conflict within each other not only will there be the threat of like the buck creatures it'll also have some kind of psychological element when you have the groups within each of those groups within um, when you have within fighting it'll make it much more interesting so I do like how you get introduced to a nice cast of characters so far and Hana she seems to be like the kind that wants to rescue people and I did like how it made her feel realistic when she felt like she she accidentally killed someone it found out later that she didn't kill them but when she thought she killed someone you see you actually wait on her consciousness and all that so that's also pretty nice too because some animes when a character kills someone for the first time they don't feel that way so it has sort of like a psychological element and then Yaganai is a guy you really want to hate so that's also pretty interesting too so from a character standpoint I found it engaging and from a story standpoint it was engaging because it makes you wonder why are they in this freaking island especially near the end because after it introduces this premise of an island with deadly ass fucking bugs later you see these people waking up they were in these devices, then all of a sudden they just kill this dude randomly, and I was like, wait, what? So that felt a, kind of like out of fucking nowhere, because when they were within the island, I was like, alright, this is cool, this is some badass shit. Then when you see people waking up from these devices and they just start shooting the random dude, I was like, I mean, okay. So hopefully, so that's the only thing that no, actually, yeah, that felt hella rushed. Hopefully the next episode can can uh, slow down a little bit. So that's the worry thing about this specific episode. Now, aside from stuff like that, there are also a few other elements about this episode that um, they got to mention that it's kind of affected my enjoyment of it. The animation quality was hella derpy, I gotta say. Now, hopefully the animation quality can improve in the future episodes, but since this anime is like survival based, if they don't get their animation right, it could wreck the whole show. For the reason being that Slice of Life animes, they can relatively get away with bad animation. Hell, one of my favorite shows um, this season is Kono Ototomare. Its animation isn't pretty. But the anime is carried through its script, and because it's like a sort of like a musical slice of life anime, so it does need grand animation quality, with the exception of a few scenes where they have to play the koto instruments. Here, since it's survival, this first episode is kind of worrying, at least from my perspective, so I'm gonna. I. It wasn't necessarily good at all. It wasn't a good sign because there was even a sequence where the chick had like a deformed hand and it looked ugly. And then when Hana was in the water, there was a moment where she's wet. And then the next sequence, it's dry as if there was like a fucking random ass dry cleaner in the fucking island. And then there was a sequence where this chick, Natsu, fell in the water. Then she's picked up. Next sequence, she's all fucking dry as if again. There was some kind of fucking hair dryer or clothes dryer in the fucking um, ship that they were in or tent thing. So little knocks like that actually do affect the immersion in the show. And then speaking of which, everyone's clothing looks hella fucking clean. Because in Hana's group, their ship gets wrecked. Then they get back in the island. Then all of a sudden... Their clothing looks all clean. You would think that there'd be some algae or fucking mud on their clothing, but they look as if they just came from a fucking from a fucking luxury resort where all their clothing was hand cleaned and properly, firmly clo um, dried and all that shit. And it's like it's too clean, you know. So there are things like that where the survival element it's hampered because of that 
And you kind of do need that. You need clothing to be dirty and gritty. Because if it's not dirty and gritty, the survival elements in this show is not going to feel as intense. At least those are the vibes that it's giving off. Because if you have giant bugs going after the human characters, well, yeah, it's definitely in the survival category. Not to say there weren't moments of horror, like when the animation was good, I kind of felt a bit fearful, but then as the episode progressed and then the animation started to fall more apart, those little details, then instead of thinking of the horror elements, I started laughing. And um, yeah, as for the audio itself, the English stuff, oh God, that shit is comedy gold. Now, to its credit, all the female actresses are voiced pretty well. Hana, Natsu, then Botan, their female actresses give them good performances. They come to life. But when you have characters like Sakata, dude, and fucking Yaganai, oh lord, that dubbing, it actually made me laugh more than some comedy ladies that premiered in the spring season and in the winter season so you know if the dubbing it, it's it literally sounded from something out of like a 90s hentai the dubbing when it came to the male characters talking so um what type of audio would i recommend i would recommend the english dub you want to see something hilarious <laughs> Un unintentionally hilarious or I would recommend the Japanese audio if you want it to be more serious. I think for me, I'll keep up with the English dub because I just, I don't know, it's just the hand quality. I think it, it'll keep me entertained. But so far though, I do think this show, it's a smidge above average because of the premise of the whole survival element. And, I'll, and for the first episode, I'll rate it a 5.5 out of 10. A smidge above average. Now, can I recommend this show to anyone? Uh, it's to be decided. I'm going to watch the second and third episode. And then I'll have more clear thoughts. But I can say this much. For anyone that wants a show with great visual quality, do not check this out. The visual quality is not good. But that's about it though. For now though, I'm going to probably watch... Two more episodes and I'll see how how it pans out but yeah for now 5.5 out of 10 which is just slightly below, above average because in my school five is average so yeah these are my thoughts on the first episode everyone honestly uh, I thought it was meh but I did get some laughs so anyways guys and gals these are my thoughts on the first episode of seven seeds comment on your thoughts in the comments below how you feel about this episode be sure to rate the video, subscribe, and I'll see you guys later if you subscribe for more. All right. Thank you all so much for watching, everyone. Bye-bye.